for our final video on the sociology of family for the new spec, we're going to look at the, what's called the dark side of families, the negative. Yeah, all these keywords here give you a clue as to the sort of thing we're we'll talking about. So, let's start. In our culture, when people say family, they tend to think of these sorts of images. Happiness, I don't know what families are. Happiness, love, support, blah, blah, blah. But, as we all know, it's not always great. So we have the abuse of children within families. This pie chart here, the sorts of abuse that get reported from children within families. Mostly, as you can see, neglect. Um, sexual abuse, that well, you know, people often think about, is actually quite small, reported, that is. And we have about 30 to 40 children per year get these, sort of, get these um, plans put in place by the authorities for their child protection for extent. Most of this is secret. If there's 30 to 40,000 kids per year with these plans, I mean, there must be millions of kids per year who get some sort of abuse, particularly if you think about neglect, not being looked after properly by their families, um, not having enough to eat, not having clean clothes, that sort of thing. So the abuse of children is, must be quite widespread in many families. However, it must be linked to poverty. In most cases, the neglect thing is often linked to poverty. Because to a feminist, one of the things they're mainly interested in or into is the abuse of women within families. And it's only been quite recently, in countries like Britain, that it wasn't a crime to rape your wife, matrimonial rape. But only in 1991 was it made a crime to rape your wife. Until then, or until that year, until 1991, Woman rang the police and said, my husband's raped me. The police would say, well, that's not a crime. He's allowed to do that. Yeah, so the abuse of women. There's a thing called the rule of thumb. Today we use it in English for a rough rule. We know it's about that, approximately. But the rule of thumb is actually a, a, from history. It was the width of stick you're allowed to hit your wife with. So all the way through history, within families, women have suffered abuse. We have in country today around about 400,000 cases of domestic violence reported to the police every year. But that is nowhere near the accurate figure. It's been estimated that for every one uh, domestic violence incident that's reported to the police, 35 are not, which means there must be somewhere between six and seven incidents per year of domestic violence. So the abuse of women within families fairly widespread. An extra feminist point that gets made here is to do with manslaughter or murder. In the UK, two women per week on average are killed by their partner. Usually those men go to prison for manslaughter. I lost my temper, I hit her, she died, the crime is manslaughter. They do maybe five years in prison, six, seven, it depends. About twice per year, a woman kills her partner, and she goes to prison for murder in that case. And the argument is that she didn't lose her temper, she planned it in advance, and so she goes to prison for murder. And so that's feminist, this is a fault in the law, this is an example of the patriarchy in action. For example here, now Shah, she's an MP, her mum went to prison because her mum killed her violent drug dealer boyfriend because the boyfriend planned to rape her daughter. But of course she got murder because she planned it in advance because she wasn't big and strong enough to lose her temper and kill him. This recently was in the news with a case of a woman, actually the law might be changing now. She was put in prison for murdering her husband and once, uh, on appeal, that got overturned and got turned to manslaughter because of the uh, emotional abuse he'd put her through for many years. So that might be changing. So the feminist view of families is that families are agents of the patriarchy, of the social control of women. They're a place where girls are socialised into their female gender roles. People like Sue Lee talk about how in marriages you have to family have a sexual double standard. 
where the women have sexual partners, they are a slag, the, the man is a player. Yeah? So to women, the family is often the nature of the patriarchy. An example I often use is surnames. People get married, the woman takes her husband's surname. So a feminist, that's an example of the patriarchy. And one final example of this hegemony is housework. Feminists would argue, well, if you worked out how many hours per week of work it took for somebody to look after a family with two children not at school, if you worked out how many hours per week that was, that's 60, 70 hours per week, if you paid that person a minimum wage, you'd be paying them 32 grand a year. And in fact, most women do that job without being paid and without thinking they should be paid. To a feminist, that's an example of hegemony. 